Twists and turns in half an hour on BBC One. The film Terror at Deception Ridge is now at 20 past one. Christopher Price. Good evening. These are the week's headlining stories. Madge Machine, Mrs. Guy turns up to see Vinny's big part. Not so solid, Drew Barrymore divorces again, this time after just eight months. And where's that Pat gonna splat? We visit the world's first cow crap casino. Well, of course we are. That's what we do on the show. Hello, I'm Christopher. Welcome to the highlights of our nightly live show from over on BBC Choice. We've had Madonna at the multiplex, Claudia Schiffer begging for a jumbo hot dog, Sting going for the hot cheese taco option. It can only mean one thing, the London premiere of new Brit movie Mean Machine. Vinnie Jones' first lead role sees him breaking with all convention, throwing caution to the wind and playing a disgraced English footballer. Colin Patterson's the summariser for this Premier League action. Footballers, prison, Leeds United, and not a mention of Lee Boyer or Jonathan Woodgate. This was the premiere of Mean Machine, starring former Wimbledon and Leeds hard man, Vinnie Jones. I just want to do my time and get on with my life. He found the role to be more stretching than a pre-match warm-up. I have to be frightened and concerned and everything in this movie. So this is complete reversal of role for me. Those up for the cup in the night included German international supermodel Claudia Schiffer, who recently transferred from Tim Jeffries to Matthew Vaughan, Mean Machine's producer. A question mark hung over Madonna's appearance, but she put builder troubles behind her to accompany Guy Ritchie. His company made the film. Mean Machine's a remake of a 1974 Burt Reynolds film, and that the sport was American football. Here, it's football. If you ask Paul Gascoigne, Vinnie Jones knows all about changing the shape of balls. Ain't that right, Vinny? And despite there being a large comedic element to Mean Machine, when the guards play the prisoners, get ready for on-pitch violence that even Roy Keane would ball cat. You get out there and hurt some people. Oh. If the Mean Machine played Liverpool, what would happen to Michael Owen? He would, he would go over the stand in the first three seconds. <laughs> But Vinny still found time to tackle his first on-screen romantic moment. You're not dangerous, are you, Mr. Footballer? Only if you've got the ball, miss. Smack the pony, Sally Phillips was the lucky lady. It was, you know, purely functional. It was just sort of sex with a sex with a famous footballer for my character. I don't know how he felt about it. Too. Is that something you know a lot about? <laughs> no, no, it isn't. No, it's the first time. It's my first footballer. But it was another woman that was getting all the attention. Who's made more good films, Vinnie Jones or Madonna? Um, we're very equal at the moment. A diplomacy Vinnie never showed during his footballing career. As for Madonna, well, there was only one thing we really wanted to know. Madonna, how are the builders going? Love the builders. Colin Patterson, BBC News. Surprised you didn't get a slap for that. She's a lean machine herself, but can sometimes get mean when you take a drink away. I've seen it. It's the TV hostess and presenter, Claudia Winkleman. I can't get mean. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> and I'm delighted to welcome one of the stars of uh, Mean Machine to Liquid News, Mr Danny Dyer. How are you doing? I'm very well, mate. Hey, you've had a good week, haven't you? It's been a mad week. I've been Richard and Judy'd up and everything. <laughs> I saw you on Richard and Judy. They, they wanted to talk about the criminal alleged past, didn't they, really, more than the film? They, it was hard work, mate. I couldn't believe what I was doing on Richard and Judy, to be honest. All of a sudden, five, four, three, two, one, I'm live. Richard and Judy sitting there. She's like, uh, <laughs> I thought, what's going on here? What am I doing here? Dude, it was okay. It was a good experience for me. I've learned a lot. I mean, I've had so much like press. I've not really had to deal with it so much as what I've, I've had to do for this film. Yeah. And it's not which is for the, the the part I've got in it. It's you know, it's not that big, so it's great for me. I'm learning a lot. Yeah. It, the reviews because um, well, you know better than anyone else. Uh, the media can give uh, British films a, a rough ride, mm -hmm. uh, and some of the, a lot of them actually deserve it, perhaps from our point of view. But the reviews of this are good so far. You must be kind Fantastic, of you know, quite yeah. harsh. I think a lot of people want to, you know, they don't know what to expect. Vinnie Jones taking on a Burt Reynolds role. <laughs> you know, it's like quite big-headed for an actor to do that anyway, but he pulls it off. I mean, he's fantastic in it. I'm so pleased for him. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect before I met him either. What was but, he like? Um, he, he's great. You know, you, you expect Vinnie Jones to walk into the room and start headbutting people and just um, acting like a maniac, but he's not. He's really humble and 
sweet. I think he's a really sweet guy. Yeah. And he really cares about what he's doing, and, and he's pulled it off in his film. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. No, I mean, the, all the, the critics have said that you know there, there are definite signs there that he could, he could go places and perhaps you know mm -hmm. play parts yeah. which don't necessarily yeah. involve you know leather and a football and stuff like that. Do you think <laughs> he can though? I think he can. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, um, you know, this isn't too far away from anything he's done before, but it's a lead role and. You, you have to warm to his character. The hardest thing for an actor to do is, is to get an audience to warm to you. It's easy to get someone to hate you. Yeah. I mean, that's, but to, to, to actually someone really care about following you on this journey, yeah. it's hard work and he does it. And you really do care by the end of the football stuff, you know, who wins. Yeah. Well, that's always good, isn't it? Yeah, kind of absolutely. <laughs> Let's play the clip. Uh, you're Billy the Limpet, yeah? Billy the Limpet, yeah. You're, you're not so hot. an idiot. You're I'm not so absolute... hot at football, are you? No, rubbish. No. Let's play the clip. Let's have a look. Uh, uh, what, 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 I, I was wondering if, um, Wondering what, Billy? Can I be in the tank? <laughs> squad, Billy. You can be in the squad. I won't let you down, Danny. You know that, don't you? Mm. Yes, the squad! Yes! Come on, run in, Bill. Well done. Did you go into special kind of breast training for that particular scene? <laughs> no, I didn't. Have it. Looking good. One interesting thing, I'm sorry, just, I'm just engrossed no, in the no, conversation. No, 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 go. One thing I love the fact that you, uh, you all had to be interested in football and play football, didn't you, to get into this film? Is yeah. that true? Yeah, well, we... Uh, and, uh, Who I'm do you support? I support West Ham United FC, the mighty Claret and Blue Army, mm. by the way. Yes. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, no, but, and they graded you, didn't they? When yeah, you but, yeah, yeah. You before to, you even got an audition, field. whether you could act yeah. or not, you, you had to do this uh, football thing. But, so, but the director, Barry Scull, didn't want to you know, really think I was a great actor and think I really wanted him for the part, but he couldn't kick a ball to save his life. What was I had a result because I'm useless in it. But I, I'm quite good at football anyway, so it's quite hard to play someone that's terrible at football. They yeah. graded you A to E, didn't you? What did you get? I don't know. Do I, do, what, oh, then you got it here? Oh. Sorry? Probably an E or something. An E. We'll, we'll go with an E as well. What about the Premier? You love a good Premier. Let's I have a look at it. some of the people who turned out. They we, all went. I take it you were there. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> who were you got, sitting there? Claudia Schiffer. Let's yeah. have a look at her. She is uh, absolutely gorgeous. Matthew Vaughan as well. Uh, and Vinny himself. What was the highlight of the Premier for you, Danny? The highlight for me was I was doing all the press and all that. And then uh, my girlfriend, Davinia. She'd already sat down in the seat, so I just sat down like that. I looked around like that. <laughs> Donna was right there. I thought, it's a bit heavy, that. It's right <laughs> in her face. So when Sting's sitting there, Claudia's shit was there, I was thinking, this is it, I'm there, aren't I? Yeah. This is, this is what it's all about. Did you say anything to Madonna? I was dying to her, yeah, and I was listening to see if she was laughing like that. I could hear Guy laughing, but um, no, I didn't say a word. I mean, I worked with Trudy before. Trudy Styler on a thing called Green Fingers. She produced it. Yeah. So she was like, oh, well done, I'm so proud of you. But um, no, Madonna didn't even look me in the eye, just blanked me right off. That's good. Oh, dear, that's a Nice outfit, though. What? You can't argue with Madonna's white coat. Like it. High collar, want one yeah, myself. No, she did look well. She looked well. Yeah. Well fit. Beautiful. Yeah, she looked fit. Yeah. See, I'm talking your language now. Good I don't man. know what's happened to me today. Anyway, uh, the film's out on Boxing Day, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, good luck with that. And Danny and Claudia staying for the rest of the show. Up next in this edition, cruising cabbage threat and Collins in Peruvian cradle snatch attack. It's mission impossible for most red-blooded mini-males, but Tom Cruise is closing in on Penelope Cruz's nuptials. Covert show business spies suggest the couple will tie the rope at Tom's Colorado Ski Resort. That's the same place he and Nicole exchanged vows ten years ago. The rumours have been flamed by reports that Lady Penelope's people have been checking out hen night venues. The loved-up pair cruised through the Australian premiere of Vanilla Sky, despite fears of a We Love Nicole fresh produce bombardment. Well, I'm very satisfied with the picture. You know, when you make a film that uh, that is different and challenges uh, audiences, you know, you get that. He's still interesting, isn't he? Now, the lift's going up again <laughs> for the stud star, Joan Collins, right to the top. The actress has been telling the world how she was won over by the persuasive Latino charms of her newborn husband-to-be. The 68-year-old star is hoping it'll be fifth time lucky when she slips on the ring of the Peruvian theatre impresario Percy Gibson, who's just 16 years old. In a triumph of hope over experience, <laughs> four times divorced, Joni says, this time, it's for keeps. It's not number five. You don't count teenage marriages. <laughs> they don't count. Um, what made me feel? Well, he's just the most wonderful human being I've ever known. That's all. Simple as that. Sorry. Right. <laughs> How do you feel? Goes like a fish. That's so cute. <laughs> he looks as if he goes like a fish. He looks 97. 
Yeah, so I don't do believe, doesn't he? It looks a bit sort of crumbling and one of his legs doesn't work, but that's a secret. <laughs> I'd take it on Boxing Day. Now, and from Happy Wedding Bells, lovely story there, to crockery throwing divorce. It lasted 300 days longer than her first marriage, which is better. Yeah. Uh, but Drew Barrymore's second stab at wedded bliss has ended in the courts. The E.T. Child star's husband, Tom Green, has filed for divorce just eight months after they tied the show business rope. Barrymore once starred in the movie Irreconcilable Differences. Now she's being accused of having them. Reporting for Liquid News, here's Steph West. Drew is Hollywood royalty. Her family's theatrical roots go back two centuries. Tom had a show on MTV. After meeting Making Charlie's Angels, they taunted the press for months before they actually wed. We got married on Saturday Night Live, actually. Thank you very much. The upside of living through a lifetime of crises before your teens meant that when Drew's marital home went up in smoke, she just got into a Porsche and moved to another million-dollar house. So the house burned down. <laughs> We're gonna go on oh, our honeymoon. No. Oh. Are you okay? Oh yeah, we're we're great. The downside is now her marriage has gone up in flames eight months later. There's so much documentary evidence, she thought it was forever. I believe that I'm a better person for being with him, you know, and I love that he makes me laugh because it is the humor in life that gets us through it. It's Tom Green who's filed for divorce. In a statement he says he still loves Drew Barrymore and he wishes their marriage could have worked. But in the papers, he cites irreconcilable differences. Drew's not yet signed these papers. She proclaimed herself happily married in all the interviews she gave for her latest picture, but admitted being deeply affected by this film about a woman whose life is tainted by failed and dysfunctional relationships. Shut up, Blizzard! You know, I wanted a relationship with my own father, and that's how Bev feels with her dad and my mother had to kick my father out because he was a drug addict. My daughter's a tramp. My daughter's a tramp. After her first marriage to a Welsh bartender ended after 19 days in 1994, Drew said the experience had been hellish, but just down to a youthful mistake. Now much older and wiser at 26 years old, she appears to have made another. Stephanie West, BBC News. I mean, you just wouldn't marry Tom Green, would you? Because he's, he's a little bit full on. Oh, no, I like him. He's funny. But for a week only. He's, he's just for Christmas. He's not for life. True. Like puppies, why don't they fix that? Rent a small dog. That's my idea. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what, what I want to say about this is I think they might be lying. Uh. Because they like playing with the press. Let's tell them we're getting married. Let's say we're going to get married on Saturday Night Live, blah, blah, blah. Hilarious Christmas joke. We're going to pretend to get divorced. They've hired I think it's lawyers. Not a joke. They're in court. It's it's not a joke. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm putting money on it. They're a bit okay. of an odd couple, though, aren't they? I don't know. He's a bit, he's a bit strange, isn't he? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it, to be honest with you. Yeah. What about your, your love life? It's, it's, it's been in the papers quite a lot over the kind of years, isn't it? You can't stay out of the papers for your love You're life. You're having a laugh, yeah. It's true, though. <laughs> I'm not in the papers a lot. No, I'm not. Well, I've got a whole sheet of the stuff all the time about things. Um, just one thing, because you must get bored of talking about it quite a lot, what? all the kind of famous women you've dated over the past. You've had Joan Collins, <laughs> you've had Billy Piper, of I course. I had the pair of them one night. It was great. <laughs> Fabulous. Just, and you get, you're getting married, aren't you, now? Yeah. Yeah, to Davinia Murphy. Davinia Taylor. Taylor. Not Murphy, star of Hollyoaks, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, just, she has two names, though, doesn't she? Two That's names? Taylor. I mean, yeah. um, she was Murphy, now she's Taylor. Is there, like, a criminal past? She's shying away from <laughs> no, that? No, Something like not, that. No, it's nothing like that. Yeah. One quote that, that did uh, stagger me was when you were going out with Billy. I hope you don't mind talking about it. When... Did you go out with Billy? <laughs> yeah, go on. I'm sorry, when I didn't know that. You came over to see her, and, and the Ferrari that Chris Evans gave her yeah. was there, kind of, in the driveway. She couldn't drive. What, what did she say to you, then? I, I thought, um... I don't really want to talk about it, to be honest with you. You told, the to you told the well, mail don't, tell don't, don't listen to that, because that's all rubbish. I'm oh, not right. being funny. I did an interview for a film I did, I was Low Lives. Yeah. I opened the paper, and it's a two-page spread about Billy. And I, I love Billy to death. She's fantastic, yeah, right? But it makes me look like a right idiot sitting there on a stall talking like a kiss-and-tell story. Yeah. It's, like, it's, just, it's just so not me. The quote was, which is not attributed to you, Billy said he's ginger and he's got a hairy back. Of course I don't fancy him. <laughs> it's, it's quite funny like, if you um, had said I'm it. I'm not being funny, but I don't talk to them. Why should they rung me or nothing? Like, yeah. She was a good mate of mine. That's just right where me. So I'm just learning about all this paper business. Mm. But they've done me over like a kipper, and they absolutely ruined me. It made me look like an idiot. Yeah. So, but, but people know that, and Billy knows that more than uh, anyone. Yeah, no, of course it's all right. But it's, on television, at least you get the kind of yes, opportunity to, to say you didn't say the yes, ginger. It's crap. It's rubbish. Don't suffer it. That's the way to deal with it, just there, forcefully <laughs> yes. to camera two, just like that. Still ahead, let's move on. Uh, Nigella does Dallas as the cook whips up America to stiff white peaks. This is Liquid TV News. 
The first pop idol to be ejected from the final ten, Corbyn, is blaming his heave-ho on being publicly outed last week as being a homosexual gay. It emerged that Corbyn, real name Chris Niblett, came third in the Mr Gay UK contest in 1998. He says his pop failure was due to his sexuality being revealed, rather than the fact he looked like a cross between Ronan Keating and Norman Wisdom <laughs> on that last Saturday show. You see him with a hat on. It didn't yes. work, did no. it, bless him? No. We'll come back to that story in just a moment. Now, Nigella Lawson's attempts at seducing stateside TV audiences with her kitchen capers have been labelled gastro-porn by one major US critic. Claudia, you're interested in this one. Yeah. The New York Times review said that Nigella had a sexy roundness mixed with a speed demon technique and that cooking with her was like an orgy. On the flip side of cooking, there's Jamie Oliver's tongue. <laughs> I have no problem with that man's tongue, do you? Yes. I don't, we'll come back to I don't that want to go anywhere near his tongue. Claudia, you Can have, I, though. Yes, I have. You're, I've been, been near his tongue. I tell you, he's got a tongue like a camel. Like <laughs> Le Mans. You know what I'm talking about? Enormous, comes out in a spear yes. head. However, raising my hand, watched him do his Christmas party thing yesterday what? on television, made a monkfish kebab. Huh? Yeah. Delicious <laughs> no. looking it was. Love Jamie now. Tongue or no tongue. As long as it doesn't fall into the pan, which would just be <laughs> ugly, because then it would no. boil. No. But he's uh, good at kebabs. Good. Now, uh, fetch the suitcase. We've learned a lot during that chat. Fetch that the suitcase good. from the van and stick a pony in your pocket. That's because the long awaited Only Fools and the Horses Christmas special is less than a week away. Yeah. You're more you know, with excitement. I can't wait. I tell you what, that's, that's just unbelievable. Why don't they make, why don't they do, um, and only fools and horses, but like a young Dell, and I could play the young Dell. Ah. Lovely. It's I'm, a job I'm, center again on this show. I'm We've up had for the it. Kerry I'm from Atomic Kitten. I'll, I'll anyway. drop everything. <laughs> you, yes. Uh, David, Jason, and co have been working up to the uh, wire on this great British festive tradition here at TV Centre amidst a tight ring of security. Claire McDonald has this exclusive report for Liquid News. <laughs> As double acts go, we're talking A-list, top draw, ringed off behind the red rope, true VIPs here. Dylan Rodney, a.k.a. Jason and Lindhurst, reunited on our screens this Christmas for a 75-minute festive special. It's part of a Trotter trilogy. The final two episodes will be shown in the new year. But, as you've probably already heard, it's been down to the wire stuff. The problem being David Jason's other commitments. He wasn't free to begin working on it until November the 17th, which means with less than a week to go to transmission, they're still filming. Just around the corner from here in TV Centre in Studio 8, they're filming the final interior scenes and there's a real buzz of excitement that one of the great comedy TV pairings of all time is reunited just feet away. Problem is, you can get this far, but no further. Strictly no admittance, and you can understand why there's such a pressure to keep it all under wraps. Winning the Christmas ratings war is the holy grail of TV schedulers. The last time we saw Dell and Rodney was back in 1996, and after years of underdoggery, they finally became millionaires. It was an episode that quite literally trounced the opposition. That Christmas Day, Only Fools and Horses pulled in a whopping 21.3 million viewers. ITV could only manage a paltry 9.5 million with heartbeat. Understandable, really. So the race is officially on to get it finished for its 9pm airing on Christmas Day. A member of the production team told me they expect to be editing right up to Christmas Eve. But hey, if writer John Sullivan has managed to pull off more classic comedy moments like this one... I think we're on a winner here, three. All right? Play it nice and cool, son. Nice and cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> and the stress will definitely have been worth it. Claire McDonnell, BBC News. Fantastic. Brilliant. That's, that's the true East End, isn't it? It's oh, like, no, that is it. That's, that, yeah. Del Boy's my hero. But what did I expect to ITV? Putting Heartbeat up against only Falls yeah. for crying out. We've now. got Nick Berry. <laughs> yeah, go on, have Nick Berry. On, on a small bike. He'll hold his own, won't he? <laughs> yeah, that's no, never going to work. But they're going to have to pull it out of the bag this year, aren't they, ITV? Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose there is an argument, in a way, which is far too dull really to go into any detail, that ITV doesn't really care so much about Christmas because the advertisers don't want to advertise on Christmas Day because no-one's interested in buying anything. No. So they don't actually is try as hard. Yeah, well, what about the sales, though? That's what it's well, that's like. what that's what you Christmas get. You get sofas me. going for nothing, that kind of thing. I but... love those sofas. Mm. <laughs> I play with them. Let's just talk about it. So <laughs> a lot has been made in the press as well about all your kind of East End gangster background. Uh, you, you're happy living with that kind of thing, because Judy was dead interested in how rough you were as a child. Oh, yes, yeah, she called me Del Boy as well, didn't she? <laughs> yeah. so that was very Del Boy. Were you right? No, I'm, not, I'm from the East End of London. I'm from a place called Custom House near Cannon Town. I'm not a gangster or nothing like that, mm. but um, um, you know, I'm just from a, a, a rough area, yeah. When, but um, it's full of a few nutters and a few yeah. plastic gangsters and 
but um, yeah. did, did at any stage did you ever enter Mr. Gay UK? No, I didn't. I'm dying to have a crack here, though. Yeah. Do you think that's very well? Yeah, I think you do really well, actually. <laughs> Can we just have a look at the, uh, the Corbyn, of course, saying yes. that he didn't, he was ejected uh, because uh, he'd been in Mr. Gay UK. Do you think that's how the public is working these days? As fickle that's as that? That's ridiculous. Can I just say one word? Brian. Huh? Yeah, you know, 70 no. grand in his pocket in Gucci, no, faster than you can say, I'll have that belt, please. But, but and he's was, yeah. uh, a gay homosexual, as you called it. Definitely do that, but was he like, he was being tipped to be like, win it, win it, this fella. Was this it? Corbin. And then he, well, he and wore then, a flat and then, cap. And then all of a sudden he's been jogged right on and he's got the hump about it, hasn't he? Yeah. So but he wasn't so he's very charismatic on he's that stage. It, he's, he was rubbish, that's why he's been jogged on. But yeah. he's got the hump now, hasn't he? He's, he's, he's probably making over. money selling a story. He wore a cap and I believe a waistcoat. Your first part was a rent boy, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. Now, still ahead on this edition, dear me, it's Christmas, I shouldn't be going down that path, should yes, I? Should. Path. No, it's a nice path. Yes, with still bells on. <laughs> still ahead, I'm glad you said bells. Still ahead on this edition, Robbie Fields, Nicole Stocking with a festive number one. This is Liquid Music News. First, I'm sure you read about it this week. Uh, police in the States are treating the death of the former big country frontman, Stuart Adamson, as suicide. The body of the 43-year-old was found in a hotel room in Hawaii on Sunday. A maid discovered Adamson tied to a pole in the wardrobe with a rope around his neck. The star had fought a long battle with alcohol abuse. A memorial service to celebrate his life is due to be held at his favourite football club, Dunfermline FC, in the new year. Now he's got some of the world's most expensive legs and soon he could be fiddling with the world's business elite. Michael Flatley is expected to float his management company next month. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Unicorn management could be valued at up to £100 million when it goes public. Flatley hopes to spin out his Lord of the Dance brand. Possible ideas include a range of clothing, a chain of dance studios, themed restaurants, cruises and small ponies. <laughs> The Christmas number one battle between golden oldie Gordon and big band boy Bobby Williams was over even before it began. The Robster and his hotel playmate Nicole Kidman have steamed ahead of the competition in this year's unseemly tussle. The pair look certain to take the festive crown, but it had been thought gravelly voice Gordon Haskell's homemade track How Wonderful You Are might just pit the pop posers to the post, but latest figures have stopped Gordon's laid-back party plans in their tracks. Roxanne. Put on your red light. You don't have to turn on the chair left as the words we were going for. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the uh, Zimmer Framers at Saga magazine have a brand new poster boy. Sting is the latest tease made rocker to grace the cover of the glossy for the over 50s. Column inches, usually reserved for knitting patterns and colostomy bag makeovers, are devoted to Sting's tantric sets and tree hugging tendencies in the new issue. Unlike previous cover boy Mick Jagger, 50 year old Gordon is happy to be a granny tea time toy boy. And thank goodness for that. Excuse me? I'm sting mad, me. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm assuming you probably met the man. Would you truly? next to me the other day, yeah. Yeah, that's what you were saying. And he, he shook me hand and said, yeah, it was a really good character. I thought, all right, yeah, sweet as. She but said he seems all right. He seems like a nice fella. Yeah, he does, doesn't she's, he? She's nice and all. You've just got niceness written all over you, haven't you? Well, not a bad you bone not in your body. Like? What? what do you I, I, no, I don't like a lot of things, but I've been getting in trouble for talking about certain things. What, what certain things? What, what for slagging people like? off? Well, you, you haven't done any one of you. Well, I did this thing for Radio 5 Live the other day, and yeah. I, I just said Ross Kemp couldn't act his way out of a paper bag, and I've had all sorts of aggravation but over isn't, it. But isn't that factual? That's I well, know, this is what it's I not. Thought. I like him. <laughs> no, I'll leave it out. He's my favourite. He's your favourite what? Rubbish actor? <laughs> no, I think he's brilliant. You think he's brilliant? Yeah. No, I love well, well, he's, well, he's brilliant. Yeah. What, what do you, I mean, is it the shiny head? <laughs> I just think he's good. I love that um, without motive. I got scared when I watched that. Yeah, but I suppose in a way that people might say that, you know, as Vinnie Jones plays, you know, the same kind of character, uh, Mr Kemp kind of plays the same kind of character. No, but at least Vinnie Jones has got a bit of charisma and he's got a real presence when he's on screen. Was, um, uh, uh, we're going to agree to disagree. We're going to agree to disagree, yeah, all right. I like it's him. just getting ugly now on yeah. the set, quite frankly. Yeah, but we'll I'm just... not being funny. I don't want to see him out in a club because, you know, he'd beat the living daylights out of me, wouldn't he, to be fair. <laughs> I don't think he would. No, he's a big old boy. I'm I think you'd funny. take him. I have to get a few of the boys up. Go for the groin. London. That's what I do. Uh, right, I'm going to up the tempo here. Yeah. I'm going to give away some gifts. Come on! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I like presents. She does drink quite a lot. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, we're going to give away booty kind of goody news now. This week's competition prize is a complete raver set of the uh, Euphoria collection on CD, plus the Matrix rev uh, Revisited on DVD. Good! That's where it ends. There's Mexican nothing else. Wave. There are no animals to give away, nothing at all. I can make a horse noise. No. Uh, you can get details on our website at www.bbc.co.uk. That's slash uh, liquid news. Will you be entering? Um, yeah, I might treat myself. 
Self, you know what I mean? Lying. She's dying to do it, wouldn't she? <laughs> a Danish. She's married to a Dane, aren't she? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, news now of uh, Lisa Steps. Do you like Steps? No, absolutely not. No. Well, you like this one. Uh, Lisa Steps turning not so much a deeper shade of blue, but a vivid crimson after being caught showing off more than just her dental braces. It's emerged that Lisa was cautioned by police in Dublin after they got an eyeful of a full moon hanging out of the Steps car window. Those are exclusive pictures <laughs> of the event. A spokesman <laughs> for their label, Jive, told Liquid News that oh, it no. happened a while ago and that Lisa was only trying to help the group crack the Irish market. <laughs> <laughs> or is that H there? I think we could have got the pictures mixed up. Still left, betting on the bovines with stupid punts. Take a gimbal on a cow and its bowel movements. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the latest madcap idea those crazy spread betting boys have come up with to uh, get us to pawn our lives for a cheap financial high. But these days, you can also get show business odds on how much money a film will make and whether Noel from Hearsay will go into the number one or two slot with any future solo release. Nana Pamar Chohan has a dog on the nose for Liquid News. Harry Potter in its UK opening weekend made a whopping £9.6 million. The hype and the marketing almost made it a sure bet. Lord of the Rings, according to Cantor, the world's only movie spread betting company, will not do as well. You can bet higher or lower according to the odds or spread offered. The further or closer you are from the figure you've predicted, the greater the loss or reward. Spread betting is risky, but you know, looking at the movie bets, it's more of a fun bet. You know, there's you know, min low stakes, you know, maximum £50, and low volatility, so it's um, not something you're going to lose your trousers on. So, if that's put you in the mood for a little festive flutter, you might want to gamble on the world's first online cow casino, Moulette. The winning number is selected by a cow randomly delivering a pile of manure on a field that we've had specially marked up like a roulette table and hooked up to a webcam. We like to think of the fully digested contents of a cow's stomach and the glamour of the world's favourite casino game. We're assured that the cows hand-picked from 227 applicants have been specially trained and chosen for their impartiality, their beauty and their healthy diet. It's simple. Daisy Drops is one of the crappiers. A webcam brings you all the action live. Pat Boss checks each winning pat with a golden shovel. As pistols finish for your play fast. I don't mind the steamers. I'm happy to check each and every pat. Now, I wonder what Daisy Drops makes of that other opener this weekend, The Princess Diaries. Naina Palmer Chohan, BBC News. It's older there. Ooh. Dear, well, you had to see that to believe yeah. it. You had to see it. But are you, you're, you're a betting man, aren't you? Oh, I bet now and again. That's a bit, a bit mad, that, though, isn't it? I'd yeah. be up for that, though, I think. I'd be so up for that. They I'll... should sell tickets, spectator <laughs> sport. I'd go. We were going to cross live to it, but they wouldn't put floodlights on it because they'd say it might you know, affect the crap outcome. Don't be silly. That's true, honestly. No. Anyway, I need to go there. it's time to say goodbye. When are you going married? Uh, not next year, the year after. Oh, that's long-term planning. Yeah, you know it is. Okay. OK, thank you very much for coming. Pleasure to meet you, and thank good you. luck with the film out on Boxing Day. Thank you. And you, as always, charming as a horse. Uh, before <laughs> we go, a look at the week's top stories. Here they are again. Madonna and Guy have led the striking force of May Vinnie Jones's latest flick, Mean Machine. Drew Barrymore and Tom Green are heading for the divorce courts, although Claudia thinks it's a joke after less than a year of crazy loving. And Viva Las Vigras, cow pat cyber gambling has become the latest betting craze. That's what my grandmother does. That's it from us uh, for the next three weeks. For joining us again on BBC One after your uh, New Year's hangover has healed. You'll be drinking, won't you? Absolutely not. And we know you will be. Uh, from everyone here on Liquid News, have a fantastic Christmas and I hope what you going to get everything you want. Yeah. Thank you. I want Thank a cow. You. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm Christopher. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.